again to my channel and now I'm going to watch a video called Kirei Kotomine Analysis. So let's check it out. How do you cope with change? When you find out that the one thing that you put your life into has all been a lie, a forlorn existence, an unrelenting anomaly among mankind. This is what it means to walk the path of the priest known as Kotomine Kirei. From the very beginning, the story goes out of its way to keep any information about his mother a secret. So if we had to give any credit for the way that Kirei was influenced, we have to give it directly to his father, Rize. At the time of the fourth war's preparation, Rize was said to have been going on 80 years old, literally like one new port away from his death. He had given birth to Kire at an extremely late age of 55. How? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> How is this dude still having kids at this age? Anyway, with Rize being 80 years old, if we were to assume that Kirei's mother was even half of Rize's age, she would already be knocking on 40, making their son even more prone to a defective birth. This gives us somewhat of an outline for his ongoing struggle. Now, Rize, a man who, from his introduction, was largely involved in the Holy Church, decided to raise Kirei under the teachings of the church as well. The Holy Church in Fate is an organization within the Roman Catholic Church that specializes it's in putting down church. heretics. Influenced by the teachings of his father, Kirei became an official executor for the church by the time that he was 10 years old. An executor, for all intents and purposes, is a murderer for the church. Let me reiterate, the dude became a professional murderer at the age of 10. What could possibly go wrong? These are the type of things that shaped Kirei's mind as he grew into an adult. His background never really went into detail on what type of training they put him through, but it's described to be the bloodiest department in the entire organization, hunting demons, vampires, and even mages that the church deemed to be down with the heresy. One of their targets that you might find interesting here is the mages. No matter how you try to bend it, at the end of the day, these mages were still human. Despite that fact, it was stated that the number of mages Kirei had taken down by adulthood wasn't in the tens or the twenties. This implies that Kirei had already taken at least, at least 30 of his own kind by the time he was 25, and he thought nothing of it. Eventually, he began to realize that something was a little off about his behavior. But it wasn't the killings, it was the fact that everybody around him seemed to have a particular interest that made them happy, something that got the blood boiling inside. What other people found to be a good time didn't move Kirei in the slightest. In <laughs> fact, nothing he had done up until this point really excited him at all. He had he an idea of homie. the one thing that might excite him, he only likes but it was too dark. No way that this could be the truth. So he looks for an alternative. By this time in the story, Kire was attending theological college. And in an attempt to cleanse himself of this corrupted mindset, he switches from department to department right as he's on the brink of mastery in hopes that his pursuit would bring him an interest that he could latch on to. This might lead you to believe that Kire was a slouch in terms of his work, but this wasn't the case. Throughout these years, Kire was wow. an exceptional student. <laughs> he skipped grades, he became the president of the student council, he excelled in everything he did not because he had some sort of raw talent, but because his resilience wouldn't allow him to stop until he found the answer he was looking for. He worked 20 times harder than the average person to receive the exact same results as everybody else. But 
after spending all this time to get these results, nothing ever came. Seeing these things in his profile left Kirisugu absolutely terrified. Contrary to the enemies he had ran into in the past, he wasn't really able to get a read on Kirei as a person. This was a man with no sense of direction, no sense of attachment to anything. For Kirei to drop these skills as if he never started them in the first place, right before he reaches the pinnacle, could only mean that this man was actually insane. Oh, how right you are, Kirisugu. And there you have it. Kirei is now 22 years old. He's graduated from college and nothing in this world has brought him true happiness one single time. Not God, not his father, not his skills, nor his achievements. At this point, he had to take a step back. Okay, I know for a fact that I'm not crazy. Impossible. Here's what I'll do. I'll go find me a woman. That's right. Find a bad bitch, dick her down, have a couple kids. You live in the dream. Following these newfound intentions, Kyrie goes out on a search for his soulmate and runs into a woman by the name of Claudia Hortensia, a woman who also happened to be a follower of the Lord. Out of all the women he could have picked, billions of women out here, by the way, Kyrie picked a woman that was dying and plagued with an illness. The story tells us that he wasn't really sure why he made this decision. Maybe he was projecting. Maybe he thought, since I know deep down something is wrong with me, I should go out and find a woman who is also at least remotely on somewhat of the same page. On the other side of the spectrum, Claudia was probably thinking of it in a completely different light. Out of all the women Kirei could have chose, he picked her, a chance that most men probably wouldn't give her. And in return, she loved him unconditionally. The two of them eventually get married and give birth to a baby girl named Karin a year later. But once again, this didn't work out for Kirei. These things did not bring him happiness. He knew the truth. The conclusion he had been trying to avoid his entire life had finally come to the surface. Kirei was indeed, at least to some degree, a natural born psychopath. With nothing else left to offer, he decided that it would be best for himself and the world if he committed suicide. And the first person that he wants to bid his farewell is Claudia. Something that tells us a lot about their relationship. The idea that he was about to tell this woman, someone he had just met over his own father, his true feelings, depicts that she must have meant a lot to him, whether he could express this emotionally or not. He reveals his final plans to Claudia, and in response, she was able to stop Kure from committing the act. Instead, she tells him no, Kire, you do love me, taking her own life right in front of his eyes. Oh. Claudia wanted to prove to Kire that he was more normal than he gave himself credit for. Unfortunately, she was mistaken. Tears began to roll down Kire's face from the sight of her death, but it wasn't because she had taken her own life. He was crying because he wished that he was the one that killed her instead. What? What? Somebody get this man a straitjacket. <laughs> Even after seeing his own wife commit suicide to save his life, he couldn't shake the wickedness that coursed deeply throughout his mind. Realizing that he was a man devoid of normal emotion, Kire figured, I have nothing to offer my child as a parent. There's no telling what I might do. I might flush that baby down the toilet for all I know. <laughs> he decided that he had no right to be around as her parent. 
meaning that Kire has never met his daughter Karin formally and she was placed into foster care shortly after her birth. The priest has now hit rock bottom. He has exhausted all of his options and lost the one woman that knew him the most. And to tell the truth, she didn't understand him either, but he vowed that he wouldn't let her sacrifice go to waste. A few days later, Kire finds out that somehow he's been given three command spells and designated to fight in the Holy Grail War. Maybe this war was the answer he's been looking for all along. For three years, he trained in magecraft with Tokiomi as his and mentor, the entering the war the thereafter to ensure the, the Tosaka's <laughs> victory. But Kirei had his own plans. Eventually, Kirei mustered up the we courage to tell to his father who he somehow. truly was. Just outside the church, Kirei opens the doors only to find out that his father has been assassinated. Oh a heartbreaking God, state of affairs. Kure had finally built up the courage to have a heart to heart with his old man, and he would never get a chance to have that conversation again. And no different from his previous loss, he began to shed even more tears, not out of grief, but out of confusion. He was faced with the same feelings he had when his wife died something he desperately tried to ignore. He knew his father didn't understand him as a person. He only admired Kire because he vehemently followed his guidance and believed in his teachings to the very end. Kire then discovers that his father, in his own blood, wrote a scripture in code, leaving him the rest of the command spells as a gift. He takes on the role of supervisor in his father's place there was no one left to impress his father his daughter his significant other all the people that could be deemed most important in kirei's life had suddenly left the building leaving his moral compass in a fragile state prior to his father's death kirei ran into tokiomi's servant gilgamesh in his quarters <laughs> sipping on Kirei's wine collection with his feet up like he paid for it. You didn't put in on this, man. Like Kirei, Gil too knew what it was like to be misunderstood. Throughout his early life, the king began to rationalize his relationship with humans to be something that was completely transactional. He belittled the plights of mankind, leaving his empathy at an all-time low, a mere source for his entertainment, something he and Kire both had in common. Although Kire continuously tried to lie to himself by conflating his idea of pleasure with being a sin, Gil expressed that your pleasures can't be a sin if that's truly what you want. For the first time in 28 years, Kire had finally found someone that at least if not understood he where he was coming from, someone. they were willing to entertain the idea of his perspective from a neutral standpoint. It's also why the wine had such huge meaning here. Wine is symbolic to friendship, happiness, and most importantly, transformation. The deep change rooted within Kire via Gilgamesh allowed him to release the seals of his own inhibitions and open the gates to the one thing that truly made him feel alive. Tragedy immediately ensues. What used to be a relationship that couldn't be broken between him and his mentor Tokiomi had rapidly turned into Kire taking his life by stabbing him in the back in the most literal sense. Taking this betrayal a step further by saving Karia's life only so he could frame him as the one who committed the crime right in front of Ren's <laughs> well, this mother. Is happiness. Unlike Assassin, who he only saw as a tool, Kirei was able to see eye to eye with Gilgamesh. 
forming a bond with the king of heroes and later becoming one of the greatest duos the game has ever seen since Kobe and Shaq. <laughs> As the Grail War comes to an end, Kyrie yeah, runs yeah, into yet another one of his targets that's piqued his interest the entire time. Kirisugu Emiya. From the outside looking in, a devilish man, one who would put anything on the line in order to achieve his goal. Seeing this, Kyrie could only think, wow, this guy sounds just like me. He must have the answer. But despite Kyrie's past infatuation with the man in front of him, not once did the two speak to each other during their battle. He recalled the information he received from Irisville, claiming that although you two may seem similar, you're nothing like this man at all. Kire didn't want to believe it. He was jealous of Kirisugu and strangled Irisville to death at the mere thought of a man throwing away what he wanted so badly. He plunges himself into battle with Kirisugu, making great use of the command spells he received from his father. Even though Kire was more skilled in terms of combat, he was not born with regular magic circuits like everyone else, meaning these spells were the only thing he had to match up with Kirisugu's clever battle tactics. Through it all, Kirisugu emerged victorious, rejecting the help of the Grail and taking Kirei's life by shooting him through the heart at the end of their battle. Kirisugu's decision caused a disaster that no man could have predicted. A great fire submerging the field as far as the eye could see. Flooding across the lands, the Grail Mud eventually crossed paths with Gilgamesh, but the king's mind was so powerful that it was incapable of being distorted, leading the cursed mud to search for the closest source of his mana supply. Oh, this is when Kira. the Europe priest Despite the reborn. fact he had been <laughs> shot through the heart, the priest had once again risen from the grave due to the effects of Angra's curse. He immediately surveys the field in shock to all the destruction the Grail Mud caused. Everything was in ruin, and unmistakably, this was everything that Kire could have asked for. The death, the <laughs> suffering, really the innocent cries for help. For the first time in his life, he was finally able to experience these things without his usual guilt. And to tell the truth, it felt good. Like lathering yourself in mayonnaise good. An outcome that gave Kire true joy. This represents a huge turning point for Kirei's character. No longer did he have to hide man. from the world, <laughs> constantly wondering if he had stepped on the toes of others. It was now time to play the game on his terms. Ten years from this day, he decides to ring up Bazette, a former ally from the Mages Association, to reunite prior to the beginning of the Fifth Grail War. Back in the days when Kire was actively working as an executor, Bazette was fascinated with him as an individual. How straightforward he was, blatantly admitting to her that he was evil from day one. Sounds to me like this should have put up a red flag, but apparently she didn't get the message. The fact that he had called her after she showed so much interest in him but never got those feelings back in return, Bazette couldn't wait to flock to Kirei's side. It was too late to realize that she should have kept her guard up when Kirei takes advantage of this meeting and fatally wounds Bazette by slicing her arm off from behind, pillaging Bazette of her servant Kukulin along with the command spells to control him and leaving her for dead. Days later, the war continues to unfold as a young boy named Shiro comes bursting into the church in search of guidance. Noticeably, Kirei's appearance has altered from the time that we saw him 10 years ago. He is three inches taller than he was during the previous war wow, <laughs> due to the effects of the grail mud. So well His hair is longer and he's even adopted an overcoat 
that matches the authority of him taking on his new position. He has, in a way, accepted the fact that he's been reborn, figuratively and literally. And in contrast to his former rival, Kirisugu, he has grown as a character. Kirisugu, despite being the main protagonist in Zero, looked exactly the same from the time he was a child, but older. Kirei, on the other hand, is no longer that dude running around trying to find himself anymore. He has no need for his old appearance. He is, however, elated to find out that Kirisugu has a son. At the end of this scene, we are able to witness the infamous meme, Yurikobi Shonen, which <laughs> translates to Rejoice Boy, as a means to taunt Shiro for his overall desire. All his life, Shiro wanted to be a hero in his father's stead, but in order for him to accomplish this feat, would also mean that he wants a villain to exist, as so I he could swoop down and be the savior. As much as you don't want to admit it, you want the same thing as I do, which is a screwed up way of thinking about it, but still true. Shiro later finds himself beneath the church in search of the priest once more. But what he finds instead are the same orphans that were saved alongside him oh, in the fire 10 years ago. So These children had been in fact stored in coffins to keep their decaying bodies alive for the past decade. All so they could be a source of energy for Kirei's servant, Gilgamesh. And if we were to look more closely into it, you could even say they were down here to feed Kirei's psychological distortion. As you progress through the novel, you begin to see some patterns that rival this treacherous behavior. Rin Tosika, Kirei's protege, had previously been gifted a weapon as a child only to find out that this very relic was the same sword that Kirei used to off her father when she got older. This has to be one of the greatest mental bitch slaps that I have <gasps> that's ever crazy. seen. Just brilliant. Mocking Rin's existence that to as Rin. if to tell her that he only kept her around to watch her suffer. Something that's further evidenced by the fact that he left her fatally wounded when he captured Ilya in the fate route using Kukulin as a mere tool and later forcing him to off himself while keeping him in the dark about Gilgamesh the entire time. All the lies that he would tell others like Tokiomi, surprising even himself at how fluid he was at deceiving the people around him. Other times where he would lie by omission, like allowing Ren to believe that his command spells were a magic crest. This made it appear as if he saved Sakura's life out of the goodness in his heart. Oh, this when, is from, in reality, this so-called magic crest were only command spells used to prolong the possibility of Angra's birth. Bringing us to the grand finale of Kirei's main goal. Okay guys, so that's the end of this video, which is Kirei Kotomine analysis and i appreciate the creator who made this video and how he thinks about this character is so deep and i totally agree that kirei is an actual natural born psychopath from the beginning and he didn't know what's the meaning of happiness for himself and that was a crazy fact that when his wife was committing suicide right in front of him after that he was crying but it's not because he was sad, but he thinks that he should be the one who killed her. And also when Kirei found that his father was dead in the church, I still remember when Gilgamesh said that actually Kirei wants to kill his father himself. So this guy is a broken man from the beginning and he really wants to kill everybody, even the people that he love or the people that love him. And also I'm amazed that Kinoko Nasu can create such a feeling with a very deep background story. And it's so interesting that Kirei chose to be a priest. 
to find the right path for his life. But it didn't work because in the fourth Holy Grail War, he met with Gilgamesh. But aside from all of that, I think the voice actor of Kirei did a very great job for this character to make this Kirei is so alive but also very dark at the same time. And I think Kirei is very interesting but a very dangerous feeling because of how the way he thinks uh, that he really loves to see chaos and catastrophe everywhere. So thanks for the one who shared the link of the video in the comment section. I really appreciate it. It's a very interesting video about Kirei Kotomine or the Yorokome Priest. And as usual, if you guys have another video that you want me to react to, just put it in the comment section. So thank you guys for watching my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. See you again on my next video. And take care.